Abostet, Meto Debi, Naha Banin Piwa Newan, Wakane Piwijinat, Esode Stuchumuzam Do, Danse, Totemtek, Kiritam Skantanawa Kakio. There was a time in my community, in my culture, we heard a story, and the story was about the beginning of time. The Creator called all the people to this great gathering. As he brought them to the gathering, it was like a big stadium and there was many who were there. He said, among all of you, who wants to come and help me work and serve my people? And at first, no one knew what to do because the Creator never called upon anybody in that way. And then this warrior came through the crowd. And as he came to the front, they say that the Creator turned him into a drum. And then he said, among all of you who wants to come and help me and work and serve my people. And seeing that it was good, this other warrior came through the crowd, and as he did, they say the creator turned him into a drumstick. And so the creator took the drum and the stick, and he, as he hit it, he said that the energy went throughout the universe and sent all the negative energy away and only brought good medicine to a bundle to the center. And so when we think about that, we realize that we were all once called to that circle, just like every raindrop, every pebble, every leaf. And so we've come here today because we've heard a calling or someone invited us, but we're not here by mistake, that we've come here and I ask that you keep an open mind and an open heart, that we share in whatever we're given in this story, in this film, that we will take it home and share with others. At this time, I want to acknowledge many, everyone who's participated, who helped here to put this film together. I want to acknowledge all of you who've come here. And I want to acknowledge our sister, Crystal Lehman, who's taken on a leadership role for the indigenous people here in Turtle Island and stood brave with courage. And even though she may have been afraid at times, she stood with courage and that the Creator blessed her that here we stand here today, we get to see what has happened. And as she travels in her life, I ask you to pray for her and think about her, that as she carries this bundle of knowledge that she would continue to bring it as far as she can, honoring the people who were here before her and making a path for the ones yet to come. I also want to thank Naomi Klein for being here, for being the storyteller and guiding us here today. I also want to thank Avi Lewis for directing and making this what it is today. And I want to thank everybody else once again for doing that. I'm going to share with you a song. It's a leadership song. And in our culture, we have, we use the drum. We also use our voice. And it, to us, it's a prayer as we say, the vo uh, we use our voice. And the song I'm going to sing was, came from a time where people came back to a tribe and everyone was killed in that tribe. And for the ones who remain, they had to carry forward. And it was this song that helped them to carry forward. And so today I come here in a good way my name is Chief Tony Alexis. I'm a chief of the Alexis Nakota Sioux Nation. I am also the Grand Chief of Treaty Number Six. I ask you to think about the ones who are before us and think about the path that we have in front of us. Ah, 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 ah,
Thank you very much. Welcome to treaty number six. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I don't think I have ever been so honored um, to, be, to be welcomed uh, to Indigenous land. Um, uh, w what an amazing honor this is for all of us uh, to receive this welcome and these blessings um, from the Grand Chief himself. There are so many uh, land, air, and water defenders in this room. So many warriors for the planet. Um, and I just, um, I just hope you enjoy the film. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being here. Um, and, uh, I, and I can't wait to talk afterwards. Um, huge thank you to Grand Chief Tony Alexis. Um, it is true that the Treaty Six Nations are the most welcoming, as far as I can tell. <laughs> we have been welcomed uh, with open hearts and extraordinary trust and friendship um, in, in these lands. And you'll see the result of some of, that, um, some of that trust and wisdom in the film tonight. Um, Crystal Lehman and the other stars of the film are here, members of the Beaver Lake Cree Nation, member, members of other Im uh, important families. And uh, this, is, this is the Edmonton premiere. Of, of This Changes Everything. You're the very first audience in this city to see this film. So thank you, every single one of you, for being the first. And for our comrades in Theater One, I think we should do a little shout out, should we not? <laughs> Theater Hi. One people, they're watching, uh, they're watching from next door. Can we just send a little? A little yes, thank you. We, we, may have a, we may have a multiplex between us, but we are one. Uh, and I, I just one, one more thought. You know, we've been we, we've been really um, uh, honored to be in rooms full of people across uh, the country this week. It is um, a time when a lot of us have elections on our mind and strategy on our mind. So we are going to be having a Q and A about the film, but we're also going to be talking about this moment that we're in, a really important moment. And I'm, uh, I just want to let you know that you really should stick around afterwards. Um, we are going to be joined by Crystal, um, the amazing Crystal Lehman, and we are also going to be uh, joined by Joanna Kerr, the executive director of Greenpeace, who has um, some concrete ideas for how people can act on what they see in the film. Enjoy the movie. We'll see you after. Thank you very much to the Edmonton International Film Festival. What an excellent festival you guys have here. And, uh, and this welcome and these two rooms full of beautiful people is, is thanks to EIFF. Actually, if people in Theater One um, are, are watching, which I understand is the case, and you want to come over, there's all kinds of seats in here. So anyone next door who wants to come over and join the conversation, come on over. And yeah. if someone in the projection booth can let somebody know to bring up the house lights, that would be That'd lovely. That would be really, really helpful. Because I sort of almost feel like I'm getting a tan right now. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to happen. Don't worry. <coughs> um, so we can thank other people while we're up here. Let's thank other people then. People who supported this, this tour we're, we've been on across the country. Um, the Council of Canadians. The, yes. The Canadian Labor Congress. And my publisher, Random House. Um, who else do you want to thank? So you want the, the best thing about a premiere is if you have people who actually worked on the film or were in the film. But that's why audience. we need lights. So <laughs> I'm going to go work on the house lights. But I'm in the just meantime, do a in the, me dance in the meantime, can we welcome to, to the stage Crystal Lehman of the Beaver Lake Cree Nation? <laughs> Crystal, it is time for you to come up here. We'll see who Crystal brings with her. I'm not sure how many, maybe Crystal will bring up people one at a time, but for starters, we want to bring Crystal. We can't and see anything. as Crystal so. is making her way up, I, you know, Crystal. Here she is. Oh, Crystal. Thank you for being here, Crystal. Amazing leader, teacher, friend. Oh, left. Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty bright. <laughs> teacher. Here, up here, to just stand. If, 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 if it's too much, if you're 
Just to invite them down, members of Chief Jermaine Anderson, members of the Beaver Lake Commission. I'm going to stand for some Chief because. Oh, okay, Jermaine, just say Jermaine Anderson. Um, Jermaine Anderson, um, who is also in the film, um, who was sitting with Crystal um, at her kitchen table. Jermaine, we would be so honored um, if you could join us. And we also have a little announcement about something that has happened since the film was finished. Would you like to share that as Jermaine makes her way up? Updates. And any Beaver and any, members that want to come down. Any members of the Beaver Lake Cree Nation who are here who would like to stand with us are also welcome on stage as we do the Q&A. Like people like Uncle Ron. <laughs> is Ron Lehman, Ron Lehman yeah. is here, who you also saw in the film. So Ron Lehman was one of the people that was critical in launching the litigation back in 2008, and he's here. We would be so honored if, if, if you could um, join us. Lots of aunties and uncles that are, Yay. I couldn't do this work on my own. I am not who I am because I was just born like this. <laughs> Um, I am who I am because of um, the people that I come from. I'm really, really proud to say that um, I come from Treaty 6, and I'm even more proud to say that I come from the Beaver Lake Cree Nation, and I'm even more proud to say that I come from, um, from the Lehman family. Um, and because of that, you know, we have amazing family um, my Uncle Ron would never stand up here and, and put himself on a pedestal, but he's um, played a critical role in, in things like the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, um, our treaty work. Um, and I'm really sorry I didn't cite um, treaty script properly. <laughs> um, I am who I am because of my family, because of my community, because of aunties, like Jermaine Anderson and Marilyn Gladue, um, who is still up there. Uh, another one of our band counselors, um, Gary Lehman, is up there. <laughs> uh, Crystal, I, I would like for you to come down, please. <laughs> and while people are making their way down, Crystal, um, you know, one of the most powerful moments in the film, um, you know, in, in my view, and many people have have felt that is the moment when you and Jermaine are, are at your kitchen table and Jermaine is ready to give up. She was a band counselor at the time. Can you let us know what's happened since? Did you give up, Jermaine? <laughs> Did you give up? <laughs> that time when we were all ready to give up and we were all crying around. On the table. Did you give up? No, I didn't. <laughs> Did the women in our community give up? Hi, everyone. <laughs> no, I didn't give up. Are you I'm still now, a bad counselor? I'm now a uh, chief of Beaver Lake Cree Nation. <laughs> the fight is on. <laughs> so should we open it up for questions? Sure. You got a stack of leaflets there? I do. Um, so if anybody's interested, at the end, um, I have the last little bit of our backgrounder on the Beaver Lake Cree's uh, historically precedent-setting litigation. Um, we are now in preparation for trial. We're the first community to ever be granted a trial in relation to the cumulative impacts of um, the industrial activity happening within our traditional hunting territory. And how can people, how can people support <laughs> the, the lawsuit? You can go to the tar sands the tar sands trial dot ca or dot com. Either way, it'll reroute you to raventrust.com. and we've got videos on there. Um, we've got videos from former and retired Chief Al Lehman, who was the one who launched litigation in two thousand and eight, while Jermaine was also in council at that time. Um, there's a bunch of donate buttons on there. <laughs> Don't yeah. be shy. Funding it's this lawsuit one, is one, one of, of the most hopes. significant yeah. uh, possible positive outcomes from, from the film. It, is, it has the power that we've seen some extraordinary Supreme Court of Canada decisions, none of which have been implemented, but all of which are useful tools for First Nations uh, rights, land rights, and other rights in, in Canada. This one has, has great potential. There are other lawsuits going on, um, the Four Chip lawsuit and, and others. but. They're stuck at the, you know, there's always this funding question. These, you know, the, you know that the government is going to appeal and appeal and appeal and appeal. 
and, uh, and, their, and their long struggles. So we're certainly hoping that the, that the film can be a, an organizing tool, but also a fundraising tool for some of these important suits. So thetarsanstrial.com. I <laughs> announced it totally wrong to an audience in, in Toronto, and we didn't raise much money that night. <laughs> this is Councillor Gary Lehman, son of Al Lehman. <laughs> So even though um, we, we don't have a lot of time for, for, for questions, so I think we should, we should take a few. What do you think? You yep. ready? Yep. Okay. 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 Right there. <laughs> is the word revolution a dirty word or can it be a clean word mm. now? What kind of revolution are we talking about, Crystal? We're talking about a solar revolution. That, that's, that's, for starters, we could have a solar revolution. Are you, are you working on uh, some solar project? We are, actually. Tell, tell us about it. Because this, this is the living sequel to the film, so let's hear it. Well, we're at the you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> we are at the very beginning stages. Um, we didn't want to be that community that said, okay, we're going to shut it all down and we have no solutions. Um, we are at the beginning stages of um, trying to fundraise for a solar project in our community, much like the solar project that just launched in Lubicon Cree um, in my sister Melina's community. Yes. You can give money to that, too. <laughs> we'll also be fundraising for UNICEF later. You know. <laughs> um, w when, when one project that we've been involved in, uh, Crystal was involved in it, uh, other people here in this room um, w were part of it, was uh, uh, this meeting we hosted in Toronto uh, in May. Uh, of 60 movement organizers. Ariel Duranger was there. Um, uh, Joanna Kerr from Greenpeace was there. Um, I'm sure there, there may be other people in the room. Oh, I think there are, I think there are but I'm not going to embarrass any of them. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and out of this meeting uh, came a document called the Leap Manifesto. And I think this sort of answers this question of you know, whether words are clean or whatever. I mean, it was funny because as soon as we launched this, the National Post immediately pronounced that we were, it was uh, named after the Mao's Great Leap Forward and Karl Marx's you know, <laughs> Communist Manifesto. Um, neither of which are true. Um, it's, it's, yeah, but that it doesn't <laughs> matter to the National Post. <laughs> of course. That didn't stop Conrad Black from writing three columns attacking oh, yeah. it. Um, but this, but, sorry, but sorry, sorry, climate denier Conrad Black. Yeah, just, just it, was, it was quite rich because he, he referred to a leading climate uh, scientist, Michael Mann, um, as uh, he, he accused him of committing uh, scientific fraud. This is a man who was imprisoned um, for actual fraud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I digress. But the Leap Manifesto is, is, is a vision for those of you who, who um, haven't read it, please take a look, leapmanifesto.org. Uh, consider signing it. Um, and you know, it, it is a vision for the kind of transformation that we need that takes climate change seriously, that listens to the scientists that are telling us we need to radically reduce our emissions, but also acknowledges that that's not the only crisis we face. We face a justice crisis. We face an inequality crisis. We face a joblessness crisis. We face an inequality crisis. And if we're going to get anywhere, it's not going to be through small one step forward, two steps back. We're going to have to leap to the next economy. And one of the demands, the key demands in the LEAP manifesto, is that the people who have gotten the worst deal in the extractive economy need to be healed in this transition. Um, there needs to be wrongs that are righted in this transition to the next economy. And that means that First Nations communities um, need to be first in line to receive the resources to own and control their own renewable energy mm -hmm. projects. So that these projects aren't done in an extractive way where it's you know, a big corporation coming in, bringing in workers, bringing, you know, and taking the profits out. Uh, you, you know, you can do renewables in an extractive way, but we also have living examples um, of the kinds of projects that are being launched uh, on Lubica, uh, in Little Buffalo, Fort Chip, now uh, Beaver Lake, 
uh, that, that are the opposite. But it shouldn't be piecemeal. You know, I, I mean, there's a new government in this province, so I hear, right? This, this is why people pay taxes. We have policies that can do this. So that's just one example. One of the, um, what the, the political strategy behind the LEAP Manifesto, and this is just one instance, and there's lots of other ways to do it, um, is that it's the, it's the yes. We know what we have to say no to, and there are lots of people putting their bodies on the line around the world and in this country to say no. But we also need to be advancing the yes, the, 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 kind, of, the kind of place we, where we want to live. And we're in the middle of an election, and the next couple of weeks are going to be absolutely pivotal for, for our country. We have to get out there and work ceaselessly to prevent the worst thing from happening. Right? <laughs> are you with me? It's important. It's incredibly important. We cannot, after, after, after a decade of seeing our, our civil rights, our, our environmental regulations, and, and other massive parts of our, the, our science, our healthcare system, and other systems deconstructed, we cannot go there again. But on October 20th, if there's a new government, let's say a minority government, let's say a progressive-ish government of some sort, <laughs> maybe a coalition that's casting around for something to do to shore up their legitimacy and their mandate, we have to be ready with the policy solutions that we have built some political power and popularity behind. So the LEAP Manifesto, the first, the first demand is that we implement the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, and we ratify it in this country. That's first, that's first. That's a precondition. But we also need massive public investments in housing, in clean transit. We need to recognize the caregiving economy, which is the existing green economy. Green jobs are not just guys in hard hats putting up wind turbines. Healthcare, education, caregiving, long-term care, daycare. Land defense. Defense of the land. Arts, something that they used to call public <laughs> broadcasting. <laughs> this is the existing low carbon economy, and it's the, it's the economy that's been under attack. It's the sector that has, been, that has suffered the worst in the last three or four decades of neoliberalism in Canada and around the world, and that's where we need massive reinvestment as well. So there's a whole ambitious agenda that people are starting to get behind. We had 25,000 signatures in the first 10 days. And, and, and I think it's just a single example. We were at a meeting in Calgary the other day of 60 people who came together to talk about what a LEAP manifesto for Alberta looks like. Because you guys are going to have a climate change policy that comes out and a new budget from this new government. And the day after those things arrive, you guys have to be ready to pressure the government to go further. Because the, most, the, the greatest favor that a, progress, a new progressive government can get from the people is pressure from the progressive side, pressure from the justice side. Because Lord you knows. know <laughs> they are under massive <laughs> pressure from the corporate, from the industry, <clears throat> from the banking, and from the federal side. So we have to push back and help them. <laughs> so Albertans, I mean, my, from what we can see, Albertans are ready to demand a much more ambitious transition agenda to get off fossil fuels in a justice-based way. And what you saw in the film is some of the fuel for that struggle. So uh, you know what to do the day after, right? Did We're you counting want to on you. Um, More questions, otherwise we'll just blab at you for the rest of the time. Yeah, we, we, also are gonna, we also need to take 20 or 30 questions from women, uh, or 20 or 30 years of questions from women for our gender <laughs> equity policy, and then we'll hear from the very confident guys. Is that cool? I can't see anything, because they're still blasting us with these spotlights. I see someone here. Go ahead. Climate conference in Paris at the end of the year, yep. Um, what are your thoughts? Is there anything that you see positive being able to come from that pressure, things that are positive? Um, well, some, there are some of us here who are going to be at the UN climate negotiations in Paris. I understand that, Crystal, that are you going to Paris? So myself and Ariel Duranger are um, Hi, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> funded by, fully funded by the UNDP, so we will be on the inside for 10 days. So you're going to be inside the negotiations. Yes. Wow, that doesn't sound like as much fun as we'll be having on the outside. But we'll be showing the film on the outside, <laughs> and lots of, lots of people who are, uh, almost everybody in the film will be, <laughs> will be there. So. so our hope is that we know that the Alberta government is rushing really fast right now to create a climate policy that won't get them laughed out of the UN. Um, and we're hoping that they do create a climate policy that doesn't get them laughed out so Ariel and I won't have much work to do when we go over there. That sounds nice. 
And you can just sit in cafes and, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Naomi, what are your thoughts on, on, on the Paris Climate Talks? Um, so the last time there was a UN climate convention of this importance, of this magnitude, was in 2009 in Copenhagen. Um, and, and a huge amount of hope was invested in that conference. It was billed as the conference that, that, that will save the world. Um, and I think we've learned uh, some lessons from that. There's actually a, a psychoanalyst in London who, who, who has named a syndrome, the Copenhagen syndrome, to diagnose the mass depression that she was seeing among her environmentalist <laughs> clients after Copenhagen because they had invested so much sort of hope and sort of messianic faith, frankly, in, in Obama coming in to save the day. And then when that didn't happen, um, there was just no next step. And the movement really kind of collapsed after that. And, you know, that we had to pick up the pieces. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm on the board of 350.org. Is there anyone here from 350? Um, hmm. Um, mm. Yay! Hmm. We'll have to you have know, a talk. Yeah, you know, 350. That. We call it the road through Paris instead of the road to Paris um, to connotate that this is one step, you know, a, 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 along the journey. And if we compare it where we were in Copenhagen, it, it, you can see the impact of this movement that that you know you saw in, in the film. Um, you know, the, the, the fact that governments in China and India are coming uh, to the table with their boldest emission reduction targets yet is a result, not just that they suddenly saw the light, but that they're under huge pressure from their populations. The fact that Obama ha is, is putting some of the boldest emission reduction targets, not nearly enough, but still better than anything we saw in the first six years of his presidency is not because he suddenly saw the light. It's because he is under so much pressure um, from the movement that has so far blocked the northern uh, leg of the Keystone XL pipeline. And the fact that this is no longer a movement about backdoor negotiations and polite lobbying. It's people in the street saying, we are going to lead by keeping the carbon in the ground. Um, so I think, we, I think that, that, that what we see in, uh, as we go to Paris is that this movement is growing. It's putting real pressure on our leaders. Um, and we're not where we need to be yet. So one of the most important things that we need to get in that agreement in Paris is room for improvement. <laughs> like we can't lock in these targets that are inadequate, that, that actually will lead us to 3.5 degrees warming Celsius. And, that, and that's what you know, the latest calculations show, even though our governments, when they went to Copenhagen, said anything above 2 degrees Celsius warming is far too dangerous. And when they did, the African delegates walked out of their, the meetings they were in and marched through the convention ha uh, hall and said, Africa will burn. This is genocide. Um, so that was two degrees, and we're on target for 3.5 degrees. So we've got a lot of work to do. Um, but you know, that said, there are these incredible victories. You know, Shell announcing that they aren't going to uh, you know, <laughs> continue in the Arctic. Um, and that is a result of this pincer um, between uh, low oil prices, right? And you're certainly experiencing this uh, in Alberta. Um, the fact that these very high-risk uh, um, forms of extraction are delivering you know, smaller and smaller profit uh, margins, if any, right? And the, the drilling in the Arctic right now is not cost effective. But what Shell said is it's not about now. This is a, th th and this is a quote from the, from the CEO of Shell. said, this is a long play. This is a long play, but we know that there is no long play, right? We need to be getting off. We need to be getting off fossil fuels in the next three decades, or we're cooked. So the idea that this is a long play doesn't make sense. And I think the fact that Shell pulled out is this combination of factors: the low oil price, the direct action pressure. Um, you saw some images in the film, but also the fact that they're starting to wonder: is there a long play <laughs> as the more and more you know climate policies are introduced? More questions. I have two. Well, one is climate. Is climate, you want to do some fundraising, you need to get over and you are the face of Jack Gaffney. <laughs> the, yeah. the cutaways of Naomi at the Heartland Institute, yeah. Play <laughs> poker. <laughs> <laughs> No, but um, when, correct me if I'm wrong, Uncle, um, 
Cold Lake First Nations entered into an agreement in, when was it, when they resolved the Cold Lake Air Weapons Range? Yeah, um, so Cold Lake First Nations actually has an agreement with um, the um, Air Base. Weapons Testing Range. Mm -hmm. And so they actually have a list of um, community members there that have access to those sites and they were allowed um, onto the sites monitored. They were, they like weren't allowed. They, 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 they were yeah. accompanied and they were not allowed into certain areas. Yes. If we were the co-chairs of uh, the Climate Review Panel in Alberta, what would our recommendations be? This is a very wonky audience. <laughs> Do you want, I, I'm, why didn't you just ask me how we would design a carbon tax? Um, did you <laughs> well, you know, I, mean, I actually, I, I do think that some of the things we've been talking about are um, what we're seeing more and more popular support for, which is not just technocratic solutions, um, but a more expansive uh, justice-based transition solution. So the real response to, to the climate crisis is this holistic vision that we've been talking about tonight. Um, and governments have to do specific policy things, um, but certainly we know that this province has the best potential for solar and wind energy, basically in North America, and there's tons of capital sitting on the sidelines because um, there are trillions of dollars of, of, of investment capital that can make more money by betting on more money and securitizing debt and stuff like that we saw in 2008 that was <coughs> never fixed. So there are, some, there are some actual market incentives like a feed-in tariff, a guaranteed price for alternative energy that would unleash some real investment, but it has to be done in the public interest. So there's a potential for huge investments and very rapid job creation, and we've talked about First Nations first and, all, and those basic principles. Um, but transit. also, and, and transit is a huge one. You know, so like the climate change responses uh, that you're likely to see in Alberta will be fairly technocratic climate policies. And what, our, what we feel uh, are what's, what's happening that's exciting is that people are starting to explode that narrow focus and connect the dots between the carbon in the air, the economic system that put it there, and all of the overlapping crises that we have, and talk about solving multiple problems at once. And I think, you know, the success of this government, uh, in my view, is really going to depend um, on whether or not they're able to very quickly demonstrate to Albertans um, that taking climate change seriously is an opportunity to build a better economy than we have right now in this province. Um, because they're, you're dealing with decades and decades of propaganda from the oil and gas industry that says what's good for us is good for you, right? Um, and you know, like we showed in the film, you know, Germany has created 400,000 jobs in their energy transition, good jobs. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, and the examples where it, we, we're, we're talking about it, of this justice-based transition, I think are examples that would actually make people feel really proud in terms of the pr actual tangible progress that was happening. Um, so I, I think the danger of this technocratic approach is that people don't tangibly see, okay, this has lowered my transit fees, right? Um, if you're going to pay- Because they're free now. I mean, uh, I would say just go bold, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but so, so, but uh, the, the key thing on the, the carbon tax is that it has to be progressive. Um, it can't penalize low-income people. Um, and, but it also can't be revenue neutral. I mean, this idea of just like giving it back. Um, there has to be, rev like what we're talking about, all of this costs money. Uh, and the money has to come from royalties, um, and it has to come from a carbon tax that is just. Um, and people need to immediately see how it is improving their lives and how it's improving, um, you know, n their pride. I think, uh, you know, in in where in where in where they live and what they're able to do. Uh, so that would be m my advice. But you know, like Albert, um, BC's carbon tax is too low. People need to understand this, right? Um, emissions have gone up every year except one since BC introduced its carbon tax. It has to be it has to be high if it's going to work. Yes. Really? Yeah, I didn't. didn't say you know, you know, this is the government that's in action. Mm -hmm. What happens if candidates don't turn the alternative radio on? What, 
what happens if candidates won't even come to an all-candidates debate? I, I mean, yeah, like I think we, yeah, we, 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 and then another audience member says just don't vote for them, which I think is, it's, it's a suitable way of punishing someone who's looking for your vote. But um, we have a democracy deficit in, in Canada, and, w and we also have an inspiration gap. Like, the, the, I think the biggest problem that we're facing is, and, and, and media is a huge part of this problem, and I say this as someone who's like been working in television and film for 25 years, the actual box is so confining, the acceptable, serious discussion is so narrow that, uh, that, that it's, we're not capturing the imagination of the voters. And so I, I, I feel like we're... I want to I invite up Joanna Kerr, um, from Green, the executive director of Greenpeace, um, to, to, to also address this okay. issue. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. you can keep talking, but no, I just no, want to No, 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 that's exactly, this is my segue to Joanna yeah. coming <laughs> up here. <laughs> All right, because they've got some concrete ideas of how to deal with this and other issues. Okay. Thank you for being here. I mean, how do you follow that? Because you've, you've basically been, been so beautifully informed uh, by, by this film and, and these such inspirational individuals to the left of me. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, this, you know, number one thing is how are we going to get people out to vote? And I, I'm just, I love the fact that the bureaucracy figured out these pop-up voting booths at universities, right? There's some, there's something going on. One website, ivoteclimate.ca, there's a huge amount of tools there. It's also these things about, you know, what we are for. I think the Leap Manifesto, I, you know, the, these guys are, are, are going to be more humble. Um, but really, as Greenpeace is a global organization operating in almost 50 countries, and the resonance that something like this, a narrative that comes from Canada, uh, also where the eyes of the world are on our country, because we have become uh, a human rights pariah, most definitely a climate pariah, that we have... Um, uh, stopped so much pro progress on, on new climate policy. So I can't tell you how many people on my Facebook feed from around the world, because I've worked internationally for, for 25 years, have said, please, please do whatever you can to transform your government. So it, it, it behooves us all to get as many people out to vote, but to also to be thinking about how to vote for climate. Uh, and really, you know, it's, if you go to ivoteclimate.ca, that, Im you sign a pledge, that immediately you'll, you'll send a letter to all the political leaders. So if on October 20th they're waking up and they're creating a coalition, they'll know how much, uh, how much energy there is around the climate, as we know. Um, but really, this is about our land. This is about our water. This is about justice. This is about unity. This is about redefining Canada. It's about also about redefining Canada in the world. And I'm just so thrilled to be standing here amongst, uh, uh, well, Crystal and her and her family and these two inspirational leaders. Thank you, Joanna. Ariel's, Ariel's got something she's dying to say. Great. And there's one, say one, it, one, say one it, last, say it, say yes. it, say one it. last plug. Tomorrow night, there is a film that, that, that people should watch called How to Change the World, yeah. which is incredible. And if people want to see more climate films, this is the story of how Greenpeace was born. Yeah, Metro Cinema at 7 p.m. Also, similarly inspirational if you're not feeling inspired in this moment. But let's, let's give Ariel the word. <laughs>
I hope everybody heard that very impassioned speech by Ariel so that I don't have to repeat it. Could you hear it back there? I mean, she's so bang on. And I mean, I will, I will fully admit that so much of the environmental movement has never actually tackled human rights nor inequality. And it's never so, so more jarring than, than, in, than in Canada. And I think you're, you are seeing because of the likes of leadership from yourself and your communities to say you actually can't separate a justice movement, tackling inequality, tackling human rights at the same time to, to, to tackle what is a sustainable development model. So organizations like us are saying you have to start with indigenous rights. You have to look at a justice agenda within an environmental sustainable. Because otherwise, we'll just be like whacking the mole. OK, we've stopped, we've stopped tar sands. Then there's going to be fracking, and Arctic drilling. No, it actually has to be an all-inclusive, integrated solution as per the LEAP Manifesto. And that's hitting home. It's truly hitting home. So people like me, I didn't come from the environmental movement. I was headhunted from, for Greenpeace coming from the human rights and women's rights movement. More and more environmental leaders are now, environmental organization leaders, quote unquote, are being brought in to actually make those links. But it is because of leaders like you who've just put it in our faces, and this movement is changing. Mm -hmm. And because the, because the thing is, I mean, one of the, one of the things that we tried to we tried to say in the film is that we don't just face a climate crisis; we face a, a, a narrative crisis. Yeah. We face we face a crisis of our founding story in 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 settler society, and and that story is toxic, and it's leading us down a road to oblivion. And we need to change. We actually need to embrace another worldview. And so it's not just a question of technocratic policy solutions. You're exactly right. If you have 100% renewable energy in the electricity grid and it's owned by Exxon, we're not going to have changed anything. The emissions in the air are just, they're, they're a symptom yeah. of, 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 of the system and of the worldview that rules. So that's why, to go back to the first question, we need a revolution of our stories. And, 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 and if there's anything that the film is really trying to do in, in that narrative space, is, is call for that, and I think we, we learned that from you. It's time for policy. I mean, we've got a lot of projects. I think your need, mic is off, Naomi. Try um, this one. Yeah, I was just going to say, just say that it, it, you know, we, we need to make the leap to concrete policy demands um, on the, uh, that, that link justice and climate change. And I think that we are on the cusp of, of like, I think this province should lead. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we don't know what's going to happen on <laughs> October 19th, but we know what did happen here, and there's a lot of rhetoric to live up to. Um, so we are going to be thrown out of this theater soon, and before that happens, I want to once again uh, thank Crystal, Jermaine, the, uh, everybody here. Chief from, from Anderson. Yes. Of the Beaver Lake Everyone Green here Nation. from the Beaver Lake Cree Nation. And I want to once again invite up... Um, the Grand Chief, um, to, to honor us with, with, with one more song before we all leave tonight. Thank you very much. I've had such a uh, wonderful experience here today. And I think uh, as I stand and, and I'm a witness to, to the film, I want to give thanks to uh, once again to everyone who's been a part of it here today, from the beginning, from just the idea to where we are at this moment. I want to thank the creator for al allowing me to be where I am at this moment. And it touched me. The movie touched me. And uh, as it is, you know, in my life, I, I try to do my role as, as a, a person on earth. And, and I, in my sayings, I always say, God is my chief. And whatever the creator puts me on, I try to walk in that in the most graceful in the most humble way. And today as I sat, I seen my people there and touched my spirit. And so I prayed, I give thanks that more people need to be aware. More people need to be educated. And it starts in places like this, that this was not by an accident what happened here today. 
and it was like a miracle that happened. So as we walk forward, let's trust in that, and let's be bold, and let's be brave, and let's share, because we need to save this planet. We have children, we have grandchildren that are coming, and they're going to be strong, and they're going to be bold too, and that someday the beauty that we got to enjoy in our life, that they too will get to enjoy that. And so let's not be afraid. Let's be bold. You know, this election that's coming up, there's a campaign. And as chiefs, we want to redefine these relationships that we have with the governments. And we need to rock this vote. <laughs> rock the Indigenous vote. I want to share a, one more story and then I'll sing a song. The Eagle Staff behind me. Um, the Eagle Staff behind me, there's two styles, and my uncles made it for me. One was a, a chief, the other one was a helper. And uh, when he made the Eagle Staff, there's two. There's one with a curve on it. Some of you may have seen that. And that Eagle Staff represents during peacetime. And he told me that the Eagle Staff with the talon on it, it represents during non-peacetime. And so I brought it here for that reason without knowing that that's why I brought it. And I asked Crystal if I, if I could bring it here, and, and I brought it, and we left it up here all the way through. And a little bit of history of that is when I was given that gift, I didn't just take it and step out. I, I went to a fast. I went into a four-day fast so that whatever I use it for will always be done in a good way. And so as we come to a close, let me say to all of you again, thank you so much you touched my spirit. Thank you so much that you're going to empower others. Thank you so much that you're going to reach others and touch others. That as you continue to go, that the Creator will bless you. The sun will shine on you. The winds will be on your back. That any harm that comes to you, that the Creator will wash it away and protect you and keep you well. So I'm going to close with a, a song. And, you know, we, we think about the old times. We think about our, our relatives.